good morning prof um uh thanks for making the time for for this interview um and um uh, and and, and to, uh, to come and speak to me the basis of our discussion uh, is going to be around the quality in higher education ensuring that uh, graduates um employability as you know um africa has got a challenge when it comes to employment mm -hmm. uh we have lots of graduates that are still seeking employment and so forth how would you define uh, quality um higher education um as a vc of one of africa's leading um universities like um, a being up how would you define the quality higher I, education yeah, yeah i think there are several aspects to high quality education first it must be a curriculum that gives you an a powerful knowledge for you to be able to perform in any profession of your choice so the curriculum must be up to date in terms of the forms of knowledge. And secondly, the curriculum must be changed all of the time. Well, curriculum reform, curriculum renewal, curriculum transformation. It must be relevant to the context, give you both knowledge as well as skills that are able to take you into a, a particular professional direction. Related to that is cut, uh, facilities, the cutting edge facilities. So if you are in the scientific world, you must have laboratories where you can use your methods to apply and do scientific work that is up to standard and that is comparable to others around the world. So cutting edge facilities and infrastructure for teaching and the general environment of the campus mustn't be de dilapidated. Then the third element, which is very important, now I could have studied the qualified staff. Imagine the effects of being taught by people who are highly qualified with the highest qualification obviously contributes to quality. Remember, a PhD also updates a person's knowledge of their area and also enables them further to do higher level research, which feeds back into teaching. And that is an element of high quality education. And then the fourth element, I would say, being taught in a university where that academics are doing research and a lot of research is being produced. So, 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 so I would say that at the very least, those four or five elements constitute high quality education uh, in South Africa. So my next question, Prof, is around um, how would you describe your strategy for promoting higher education in higher education in Africa? No, so so our strategies, I mean, for each and every institution must, if you like, uh, then the word is not idea, but practice all of those four or five elements of higher quality education that I should. But if promoting high quality education in Africa also involves working with others. And these things include staff student exchanges, doing research together, and also having these networks in which we meet to compare ideas because peer learning is very, very important. One promotes higher quality internally, but you cannot attain high quality by just promoting it within yourself. You partner and collaborate with others you exchange and you build them as they build you, if you like. And, and, and that way, because knowledge is not national. Knowledge knows no borders or boundaries. Knowledge is actually global. And the best of knowledge, you know, you attain by actually interacting with others. Yeah. Correct, Prof. Uh, I like the two ways there, uh, partnering and collaboration. Since you've mentioned the partnership and different universities around the world that you partner with, mm -hmm. what do you think, what are the barriers uh, to accessing higher education uh, quality higher education uh, in Africa, and how, how can we overcome this uh, these barriers? To enter a university that is of high quality requires you to have a strong high school background, which is often expressed in the in the in the in your results from your matric or your high school living examination. Now, our higher our highest uh, our basic education system is not that strong. So I think that, that that is one of the barriers is the strength of a basic education system to give the knowledge skills for a young person to be able to be admitted into a, a higher education institution. The second barrier also is um, is, is cost sometimes, affordability. Uh, the more high quality institutions, often the fees are much higher, in part because they need the money to keep up the quality. But then for people without money, they can't access that quality, if you like. The third thing is also on our continent, including in South Africa, we don't actually have enough universities for the kind of population we have, which is a growing population. Because Africa, unlike Europe, America, or China, and so on, uh, is, is a growing, the population is growing. It's not 
is not declining. There are more younger people than, and younger people need the education, the skills, and the knowledge to make it in life, right? So that means you need more universities, of course, with a high quality curriculum, good facilities, well-educated teachers, even at basic education level, and, and also highly qualified lecturers. So what I can say is that in Africa, the access rate to high quality education is lower than in Europe or China or the United States. The children of blue collar workers, nurses, teachers, soldiers, uh, you know, those kinds of people is children are not covered by NEFSAS, but they don't have enough money to pay for, you know, for high quality education, whether locally or abroad. We have now to think about how do we, uh, 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 how do we extend access? That means thinking of a new financial model that covers the missing middle and those who are not covered. Second, cleverly using online education. That By that, I don't mean people just doing 100% online, using hybrid. Can we use online to expand access as well? So, so it's a big challenge for Africa to be able, but I think the digital opportunity is, a, is an opportunity that should not be lost. Those barriers, we must turn them into opportunities and turn them into opportunities actually to, 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 to be able to do better. Because it's the human capital, it's the human resources that the country needs to develop. So it's a big, it's actually a good investment to educate your people and to educate them as, as many as possible because that means you have enough doctors, enough teachers, enough nurses, enough engineers, accountants, and if you have those skills, you can create new jobs. You address poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Our challenges are a huge investment opportunity for the development of, for the sustainable development of our country. Uh, infrastructure remains a, a challenge. I mean, mm -hmm. connectivity in rural areas, it's a challenge. I mean, data prices also, they remain a challenge. That revolves around the cost that you just mentioned. It must be seen that wiring those schools and putting infrastructure is an investment. Correct, so, yes. Course, yes, but it's actually an investment with very good outcomes. You improve teaching and learning in high school, you improve matric rates, you improve, increase the number of people that can access higher quality education. So investing throughout actually is, 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 is an investment into a better future for all and a better future for the country. You've mentioned the number of universities uh, that you've partnered with. I'm yeah. sure there's two or three things that we can learn from them. Funding is important. Investing in the in an, in an education system and in universities, investing in both, you know, scholarships and bursaries, investing in the training or even of, 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 of academics to have the highest qualification and to be able to do research and investing in research and investing in infrastructure in general. That's what I see when I go to Europe and North America and, and, and North America, especially the US. The second thing is having partnerships because through partnerships, you're able to learn PA share, p and and also do things with others. And, and that always is, is better. Working together, you can do more and you can do better if you like. The third thing also is um, uh, what we can learn from other universities is make sure that universities align their curriculum and the research that they do to local challenges, some of, some of which are global challenges. In other words, impact. A university must ask itself, what skills are needed in this society? And how are we going to provide for those skills? What are the challenges facing this society? Gender-based violence, poverty, unemployment, inequality, the impact of climate change, you can go on. And then choose do research agendas using the cutting edge research to produce knowledge that can actually be used to address those. Those, are, those three things are very, very important. They, Immediately you do those three things. You get a high quality education system that is impactful, that is an asset to the country and that can actually change life for everyone here. Yeah. Work is no longer static. It is changing all of the time. And if the institutions that train you do not also change all of the time, you're going to get that mismatch where people are unemployable graduates. And so ready for work, anticipating the future of work, renewing the curriculum all of the time, transforming it. Universities must now prepare for the fact that people won't get a degree and go away. They will come back for a new qualification, it might be a degree, it might be a course, because lifelong learning is going to be the future. And, and, and yes. so you are no longer graduating and say goodbye, now you have your degree and now 
work until that person might come back to say what I trained in no longer really exists. I need to change direction career hours. I wanted to um, send my thanks from in, in, uh, Northwest University on agreeing to participate in this interview. Uh, we really appreciate it. And um, we're hoping in future uh, there will be more collaboration between uh, Northwest University and UP and uh, we can take Africa forward. So I wanted to take this moment and say thank you uh, for your time, Prof. No, you're welcome.